First up, we learn about research aimed at improving goalie pads. Yeah, this whole work began uh, when we tried to understand why goaltenders had a higher incidence of hip injuries. Um, at the, in the first project really concentrated on goaltenders' hips while they were dropping into the butterfly. But as times uh, move forward, as time moved forward, uh, we partnered up with Reebok CCM Hockey and, and our work kind of split from a, uh, also a clinical side, looking at the hips, looking at the forces in the hip and that, um, but also looking at it from a performance perspective, understanding how the goalie pads are interacting with the goaltender's body uh, and how that actually affects uh, butterfly performance. The things we noticed with the goalie pads is that we didn't necessarily change the way goaltenders were playing. Their technique remained the same in different goalie pads, but what we noticed was a flexible tight or a stiff wide leg channel goalie pad, they actually performed better in butterfly performance variables such as uh, butterfly drop velocity uh, compared to goaltenders that came in wearing their control pads or pads that they were wearing currently in competition. One thing we noticed was with the new pads, it looked as though goaltenders were getting a 6 to 7% increase in butterfly drop velocity, and peak butterfly drop velocity, which can account for almost about one and a half puck height. So if you think about it, a goaltender in a, in a newer pad, in a flexible tight goalie pad, uh, they can close the door in the five hole um, about 6% faster than a goaltender wearing their, their older goalie pads that they're wearing currently. Each goalie who comes in to do this trial, what would you, what would you get them to do? We get them to do 22 different movements when they come in in randomized order. We get them to do uh, power pushes, so in their butterfly they power slide from side to side. Uh, we obviously concentrate a lot on butterfly movements, uh, but we also get them to do um, T pushes and shuffle slides, things like that, because we want to know if the pad's really rotating a lot on the T. So when they kick with a T, they push and stop. If that pad's going to lag behind that motion, how much that's happening. So okay. in combination of those different movements for, for 22 total movements. For 22 total movements. They're generally sweating by the time they're done. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. So um, take me through one of those movements. What would you be... So basically what you're looking at is when they're going down into this. Yes. Kind of trying to make sure that that's close. Yes. So primarily what we're doing is, I'm going to switch sides, I apologize. So when we're doing the butterfly stuff, when you're standing upright, we want to find out how fast this is going to close. So what we use is, we use the markers on the top of the pad here, and we can quantify where they are in space. Okay. So using the, the, their displacement over time, we can actually figure out how fast they're moving. So that moment from here to closing down the five hole, we can actually quantify that space to figure out how quickly they've closed their five hole. Okay. And with these straps, you're able to, because you don't have that restriction around your legs, that closes quicker? Uh, one thing that actually helps close it um, specifically is that that knee cradle is actually fairly deep. It's much deeper than in the past, so mm -hmm. it actually helps your, your feet flare out to the left and right. So it actually takes your pads from almost being like this shape, almost tight, to a little bit wider out. So that helps actually cause these to overlap. Okay. And then you're doing this and it's you're pushing across and you're doing Yes. Okay. So if they if they're going to be doing power pushes or anything like that, another thing we look for is how much the pad seals to the ice when they're doing those power mm -hmm. pushes. Uh, a lot of guys depending on how they set up their straps and things like that, when they push across, this lead leg has a tendency to come up. So if you were to push come this way, so a lot of the time, yeah, that first leg will lift yeah. up a bit. And when that does that, that leaves you obviously exposed to any shots coming from this angle. And this is where you're coming to stop the puck, right? Yeah. So you want to get a good seal on the ice. So you're saying when you're coming across, there's a tendency for that pad just to stay up a little bit more. At times, yes. Yeah. A very common thing to see in equipment companies these days is, is a lot of the straps are being removed from goalie pads. Uh, but uh, working with Reebok CCM, we wanted to make sure that if we remove straps, we didn't change the way the goal pad interacted with the goaltender's body. Uh, so what we did was we quantified 
um, the strap lengths in each goaltender, so the thigh strap lengths and the calf strap lengths, and we correlated that with butterfly drop performance, and we noticed that there was a few strap locations, such as the top thigh straps, that were not really correlated with performance, so we removed them. Uh, it seemed redundant to keep pad straps there that were just adding weight and not necessarily helping at all in performance-wise. So what we did notice is that the major strap to keep was the top calf strap. It was the highest correlation with butterfly performance, so you'll notice on a lot of the CCM product now that that top calf strap is remaining there. Uh, it's, it's very exciting to see junior goaltenders moving up. Uh, it has the implication that perhaps if the goaltender enjoys it and they continue on to other levels, you can kind of see that progression up into the big leagues. Uh, but more importantly, it's just uh, having your research results becoming applied research. And that's really the most exciting part. And a lot of times in academics, you don't really see uh, a gratification of your results very quickly. So it was nice to see that within a, a decent time period.